Since we started our deep dive into the world of pocket pistols and other small caliber handguns, I have received endless requests to talk about the 22 Magnum. Well, 22 Magnum fans, your day has arrived. And for the rest of you who have been following this series, waiting to see if I will cover your favorite mouse gun caliber, fear not, I will get to it. I've got stuff planned for 32 ACP, all the various 32 revolver calibers, 380 ACP, and if you comrades are really nice, I might even throw in something about 9mm Makarov just for kicks. And I'm still planning to review different carry methods and holsters and pocket pistol specific drills and shooting tips. If you're already sick of hearing me talk about pocket pistols, that's okay. We can still be friends. I plan on taking plenty of breaks along the way to look at some completely unrelated topics before we get to the end of this series. 22 Magnum, or more officially 22 Winchester Magnum Rimfire, made its debut in the 1960s as a cartridge for hunting varmints and small game. Even though it's most effective when fired from a rifle, revolvers chambered for 22 Magnum have been around as long as the cartridge itself. These revolvers have been used for hunting, for pest control, and for target shooting, but more recently, they usually take the form of concealable, lightweight snub-nose revolvers intended for personal protection. There is also one semi-auto 22 Magnum in current production, the kel PMR-30. It's claim to fame as a magazine with an impressive 30-round capacity, but its viability as a serious self-defense tool is questionable. Since it's basically a full-size pistol anyway, it does not fit into our pocket pistol series, so I will save my critique of that one for another day. A modern 22 mag snubby typically gives you six or seven shots in the same size package that would normally hold five rounds of 38 special or eight rounds of 22 long rifle. That makes the 22 Magnum an interesting compromise between those other two cartridges. But is it the best of both worlds or is it the worst? Out of a two inch barrel, 22 Magnum makes a lot of noise, but the actual felt recoil is barely more than a 22 long rifle. So it's a lot easier to control effectively than a 38, which is especially important for a lightweight revolver. But another trait that 22 mag shares with a 22 long rifle is the rimfire primer. And along with that comes more frequent ignition failures. On average, the quality of 22 Magnum ammunition actually seems to be higher than that of 22 long rifle, but failures to fire due to light primer strikes are still common. Now, like I've mentioned several times before, with a revolver, that's not necessarily the end of the world. If the round doesn't go off, you just press the trigger again and fire the next round. But obviously, if you are relying on this gun for self-defense, the last thing you want is to get a click when you expect a bang. This 22 Magnum Ruger LCR that I've been using fails to fire about once every 25 rounds. Now, that's not normal for an LCR, and I do need to send the gun to Ruger and let them take a look at it. At the same time, it's not a surprising issue to run into with a rimfire, and it's something you don't usually have to worry about with a centerfire model. In order to help prevent these ignition problems, the gun makers use heavier springs and the rimfire revolvers, which in turn makes the triggers feel much heavier. I talked about this issue when I covered the 22 long rifle revolvers, and it's the same thing with the 22 Magnums. Most of the centerfire LCRs I have measured have triggers between 8 and 10 pounds. My trigger pull gauge maxes out at 12 pounds, but I would estimate this 22 Magnum to be around 14 or 15 pounds, which is heavy even by rimfire standards. With most of these guns, it is possible to swap out the factory springs for lighter springs. Every revolver is a little different, and sometimes the lighter springs work just fine, but for other guns, it might cause reliability problems. Ultimately, you can get a 22 Magnum revolver that will run very reliably, but it might take some luck or some experimentation with different brands of ammo or even a trip back to the factory. And you still shouldn't expect it to be as reliable as a 38 or any other centerfire caliber version of the same model. With 22 long rifle, it can be easier to overlook the reliability issues because you can enjoy all of the benefits of dirt cheap ammo. But that's not quite the case with 22 Magnum. Based on current ammo prices, the average cost cost per round of 22 mag is about four times higher than 22 long rifle. It's roughly on par with the cost of nine millimeter. The good news is that 22 Magnum is still more affordable than 38 special, which is usually priced about 60% higher still. You're probably not gonna make a habit of burning through 500 round bulk packs of 22 Magnum in a single afternoon, but compared to anything other than 22 long rifle, the cost is really not bad at all. So then it all comes down to ballistics. Is 22 Magnum significantly more effective than 22 long rifle? 
22 Magnum is known for being far more capable than you might expect such a small cartridge to be, but that legendary reputation is primarily built around hunting with 22 Magnum rifles. A shorter barrel takes away a lot of that punch. For example, the label on this box of 40 grain CCI Maxi Mag hollow points claims a velocity of 1,875 feet per second. I have no doubt it can do that out of a rifle barrel, but with a 1 and 7 8 inch snub nose, it averages only 1,089 feet per second. That's 42% slower. So we can't expect rifle performance out of a 22 mag snubby, but let's see how it compares to 22 long rifle. The CCI Velocitor is one of the faster 22 long rifle loads out there. It also has has a 40 grain bullet and out of a snub nose I clocked it at 914 feet per second. So in this case the Magnum is faster by 175 feet per second. I will be doing some more extensive velocity and ballistic testing with these calibers in the future, probably after we are done with everything else we want to cover in the pocket pistol series. For now, I did another quick informal ballistic gel test with a few 22 Magnum loads, just to get a basic idea of what effect this bump in velocity might have on terminal performance. Starting with two rounds of the CCI Maxi Mag, we got a penetration depth right around 15 inches. There was no expansion, which is not a surprise since these bullets were designed for much higher velocities. Looking back at our gel test of the 22 long rifle CCI Velocitor from a few weeks ago, you can see that load only averaged around 11 inches of penetration. So a 19% increase in velocity got us a 36% increase in penetration depth, putting our 22 Magna bullets well within the ideal 12 to 18 inch range. I also tested a couple of 22 Magnum loads from Hornady and Spear that are specifically designed for self-defense with short barrels. The Hornady critical defense box actually lists velocities for a 24 inch rifle and a one and seven eighths inch revolver. It says here to expect 1000 feet per second, but my chronograph measured it a little faster than that at 1105. In the gel test, the penetration depth was around 11 to 12 inches, and we did see a little bit of expansion. The two rounds of Spear Gold Dot I tested were moving along at 1140 feet per second. They ended up right in between the other two loads at 13 and a half inches and also had some nice expansion. So we've got what looks to be some pretty decent performance here. The penetration depths look very similar to what we were getting with some of our 38 special loads from our big test a while back. Of course, with the 38s, you've got the potential for a lot more expansion. And even if it does not expand, the bullets are much heavier and probably less likely to deflect if they hit bone. But the little 40 grain 22 Magnum seems to be punching far above its weight, especially when you consider the almost non-existent recoil. I'll admit that in the past, I've been pretty quick to dismiss 22 Magnum because it does lose so much velocity in a short barrel. So why not just use a 22 long rifle? But looking at these velocities and what these loads are doing in gel has me second guessing that opinion. If you are considering a 22 Magnum snub nose for concealed carry, I would strongly suggest sticking with either a Smith & Wesson J-Frame or a Ruger LCR. I know I mentioned some potential problems you can run into with those guns, but on average, I think you've got a much better chance of getting a decent revolver from either of those companies than with the alternatives. A few weeks ago, I did a detailed comparison of the J-Frames and the LCRs. They are very similar in a lot of ways, and both of them are solid designs. With the 22 Magnum models, the main difference is the ammo capacity. The Smiths hold seven rounds, and the Rugers only hold six. The standard 22 Magnum LCR is a double action only model like this one. It weighs 15.1 ounces, which is actually a little bit heavier than the 38 special version. The LCR X has an exposed hammer for a single action capability, and there's also an LCR X with a three inch barrel. That one is pretty interesting because I bet that extra inch of barrel could squeeze quite a bit more velocity out of those 22 Magnums. From Smith & Wesson, you have two options, the 351C and the 351PD. Both of them have an aluminum frame with an aluminum cylinder, making them among the lightest Smith & Wesson revolvers ever made at 11.5 and 11.2 ounces, respectively. The double action only 351C is essentially the 22 Magnum version of the 43C that I talked about in part seven of this series. It's got the same XS front sight and and U-notch rear and synthetic grips. The 351 PD has a hammer spur, a fiber optic front sight, and wood grips. And that's the end.